million creatures. I'm Gail. And I'm Stephen. And here's a look at what's coming up on today's show. If you were bitten by this deadly creature, you'd almost certainly die. Find out more in today's brilliant but deadly creature countdown. This is the biggest cat anywhere in the world. It weighs half a ton, but what is it? Well, we travel to America to find out. Plus, why one of these brilliant creatures is thought lovable and the other is officially classed as vermin. It's all coming up on today's show. We've had some truly adorable animals here on Brilliant Creatures, but just meet Willow. Willow is a Chihuahua puppy and is one of the smallest puppies in the whole world. And just have a look at these guys. These are some Bernard puppies, and these are some of the largest puppies in the world. They're just so beautiful. They're gorgeous. Aren't they? Look, he's got to sleep on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> and just check out the difference in size. Look at that. Now, little Willow here is only seven weeks old, but the St Bernard puppies are only five weeks old and they're already four times the size of the Chihuahua. Now, Chihuahua puppies are actually called toy dogs and are bred to be as little as possible. But the St Bernards are traditionally used as mountain rescue dogs, so they're bred to be as big and as tough and as strong as possible. Everything about the Chihuahua puppies is very little. And everything about the St Bernards is very large. Now, Willow here only weighs half a kilogram and that amounts to this much dog food. But these St Bernards already weigh seven kilograms. That's the equivalent to this much dog food. <laughs> and what about the Chihuahua's coat? It's very sleek and made up of very fine hairs, which is perfect for the heat of Mexico, where the Chihuahuas originally come from. But look at the St Bernards. They're already covered in this beautiful thick fur and that's to keep them warm in the snowy climates of Switzerland. And what about their feet? Have a look at the Chihuahua's feet. Look, it's so small and dainty, look. And look, come on, show us that paw. It's six times the size of the Chihuahua's paw, and it's big and round, and that'll help him when he's trudging through the thick snow. Now, even when Willow here is fully grown, he will still be very little. Meet Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea, come on. This is Willow's mum, and look, She's still really little. She's meant to be the grown-up. And when these St Bernard puppies are fully grown, they'll be... Well, just have a look at this guy. This is Chubby Checker, and you're beautiful, aren't you? And he's the dad of all these St Bernard puppies. And he weighs 160 times as much as little Willow here. That's the same <laughs> weight as me! And he likes the look of Willow. <laughs> and that's the equivalent of this much dog food. So the little Chihuahuas... And the large St Bernards all have puppy power. This is the part of the show where we take a look at creatures that are not only brilliant but are totally deadly to humans. And our next deadly creature is probably the most dangerous creepy crawly on Earth. One bite from this creature and you could be dead in just 15 minutes. It's a spider but not the kind you want to be getting out of your bath. The funnel web spider, number four in our top five deadly creature countdown. Funnel webs are seriously aggressive creatures, so there's no messing around here. These gloves are a must because remember, one bite from this spider and we could be dead. Now, what we're going to do is use a specially designed camera. If we put it in front of the spider, hopefully we'll see it rear up into its attack stance. Now, the spider has to rear up in order to attack its victim and it has fangs that are so sharp they can even pierce a fingernail. But it can't attack without moving its whole body. Once it's reared up onto its back legs, it lunges down, sinking its massive fangs into its unfortunate victim. Lots of people have had unfortunate encounters with funnel webs and the results are always horrendous. First of all, you get numbness around the mouth and then your tongue goes into spasm. Excruciating stomach pain and sickness will follow. Uncontrollable sweating and dribbling is next as your body goes into complete meltdown. The brilliant but deadly top five at number four. It's the funnel web spider. Risk zone throughout Australia. Time till death can be as short as 15 minutes or as long as a week. Treatment, anti-venom available and immediate hospital treatment essential. Number of deaths, more than 10 recorded cases, although the actual number is probably higher. One deadly creature definitely to be avoided. The brilliant but totally deadly funnel web spider.
If I asked you to name the biggest cat in the world, what do you think it would be? Well, we'll give you a few clues. Have a look at these. That's a picture of its face. That's its fur. And here is the world's biggest cat paw. What kind of cat do you think it is? Oh! Now, you may think one of the biggest cats in the world is one of these guys. This is Tao, a young African lion. No. Oh! <laughs> Ooh! I tell you, he's only one years old. Would you believe me? Just look at the size of him. Come on, let me straighten it out. Come on, come on. He's <laughs> jumped. Now, he is only one and his strength already is just incredible. I can't even move this leg. I can barely <laughs> even get up. Now! <laughs> <laughs> now, he won't be fully grown until he is five. He's actually taking my trainer off. He has took my trainer off, everybody. Okay, I'll move my foot. It's very important for lions to be big because they hunt large animals like zebras and wildebeest. And what about this? Just have a look at his paw. Can you see this? <laughs> and he's going to keep on growing until he's as big as Arthur he. Lions can grow over 2.8 metres from nose to tail, making them the biggest cats in Africa. Oh! Lions Ooh. might be the biggest Ooh, cats in Africa, but I'm afraid they're not the Ooh. biggest cats in the world. If this isn't the biggest cat in the world, what is? How about one of these? This is Chandra, and she's a beautiful one-year-old Bengal tiger. She's only half the size she's going to be when she's fully grown. And a fully grown adult tiger can actually reach 300 kilograms. It's about six times as much as my weight. Tigers have developed an unusual hunting technique involving this stuff water. Now most cats hate the water but tigers are good swimmers. They've even got webbing between their toes. If given the chance a tiger will chase an animal like a deer into the water. Now the deer's long skinny legs are no good for swimming so the tiger's able to catch it much faster in the water than on the land. <laughs> Well, tigers may be the biggest cat in the wild, but they're still not the biggest cat in the world. Because this is, this is Sudan, the biggest cat anywhere in the whole wide world. Now, if you guess lion or tiger, then actually you wouldn't be that far wrong because Sudan is a mixture of both. You see, his dad was a lion and his mother was a tiger. That's why these type of cats are called ligers. But if you've never heard of one, it's actually no surprise because there's hardly any of them in existence. Well, they never breed in the wild because lions live in one part of the world and tigers live in another part of the world, so they never actually meet. But they can be bred in captivity like Sudan here, but not very often. In fact, there's only 12 of them in existence in the world today. Now, have a close look at his face. Come around here, look. You can see he's got the face of his lion dad and he's got the stripes of his tiger mum, but he gets the size from both of them. He actually weighs over 400 kilograms. That's nearly half a ton. Now, Sudan stands on his hind legs like this. You can see just how massive he really is. He's nearly four metres tall, which is like me, standing on Gal's shoulders. Now, this is slightly freaking me out because he's actually looking straight in my eyes, right? <laughs> so, Sudan, bigger than the biggest cat in Africa. He's bigger than any other cat in the wild. Bigger than any other ligers. Making him officially the, the biggest, biggest cat in, in the, the whole, whole wide world. world. These brilliant creatures are brown rats. Rats are some of the most versatile creatures on the planet. They're brilliant at adapting to new places and they seem to get everywhere. They can squeeze their bodies through tiny holes, they can jump, they can climb, and they can even swim for miles and miles. Rats can be found wherever there are people. In fact, in this country, you'll never be too far away from a rat. But unfortunately, rats have a pretty bad reputation because they spread really nasty diseases. In this country, rats are classed as vermin because they live in dirty places like sewers and rubbish tips. Now, there's another brilliant creature which looks very like a rat and is often mistaken for one, but it's not. It's a brilliant water vole. And unlike rats, water voles are very choosy about where they live. They like nice riverside homes in the country. The rat and the water vole may look very similar, but they're two very different creatures living very different lives. And there is one telltale way of spotting which is which and it's their tails. If you have a look, the rat has a scaly tail, but the water vole has a hairy tail.
Rats are very common, but water voles are less well known, but totally brilliant. They make their homes actually in banks of streams and rivers because they're very at home in the water. Which is strange because they don't actually eat anything that's in the water. They don't eat fish. In fact, water voles are vegetarians and they like to make their dinner out of the plants and grasses that grow at the side of the river. So why do they live by the water? Well, it's all to do with trying to avoid being eaten. Now, as you can see with our studio borough, it has one entrance below the water and one above. So if the water vole needs to make a quick escape, it has the choice of two escape routes it can use. Which is just as well because there are plenty of animals out there that like to eat water voles. Otters, mink, stoats, heron, barn owls, pike, there are loads of them that all have water voles at the top of their menu. And what about this? If two escape routes isn't enough for the water vole, it has another cunning trick hidden up its sleeve. When a water vole's been chased underwater by a predator, such as an otter, it'll raise a cloud of mud from the bottom. That cloud of mud acts like a smoke screen, allowing the water vole to swim off without being attacked. It's clever, isn't it? So the water vole makes for a super sly, but very lovable, brilliant creature. Two animals mixed up. Don't know your stoats from your weasels or your crocodiles from your alligators. Well, this is the part of the show where we give you the knowledge to spot the difference. And today we have two of Britain's brainiest blackbirds in the studio. Meet the raven. And this is the crow. Now the crow... And the raven are both tough, ruthless birds, which are a common sight in the countryside and woods around the United Kingdom. But they've also learned to live around towns and cities. And they've even adapted to life around people. Now, have you ever put some bread down in your back garden trying to attract maybe some little starlings or sparrows and then a huge, great big black bird comes down and eats it? Well, the chances are you've just met a crow or a raven or sometimes you see a big, sleek black bird on a motorway dodging the traffic trying to scavenge a squashed hedgehog. There's another good chance that's a raven. Or a crow. But what are the differences between the UK's bravest, brainiest blackbirds? Spot the difference, number one. The most obvious difference is size. The crow is only about the size of a large pigeon. But the glossy blue-tinted raven can be three times bigger than the crow. But sometimes a small raven will look very similar to a large crow. Spot the difference, number two. The crafty crow on the right has a straight beak and eats small prey like worms, insects and birds' eggs. Whereas the raven has a thicker, heavier beak which is more rounded at the bottom than the crow's. It uses that sharp beak to tear into rabbits, ducks and even young lambs. Spot the difference? Number three. The crow on the right has fan-shaped tail feathers. But the raven's tail feathers are wedge-shaped and come to a point in the centre. And spot the difference, number four. The crow's wingspan is 30 centimetres across. But the raven's wingspan can be as big as 90 centimetres. That's three times bigger. So next time you spot a big black bird in your garden, remember the brilliant creature's four-point plan on how to spot the difference. They're two brilliant creatures worth crowing. And raving about. <coughs> next time on Brilliant Creatures, meet the stoat and the weasel. There's Bubbles the water-loving elephant. And a dog with a very unusual diet. Well, that's it for today's show. And if you want to find out about anything that you've just seen, why don't you check out the Brilliant Creatures website. The address is on the screen there. And we're going to leave you with some of today's most brilliant creatures, plus some bits you haven't seen. Bye. Bye, see ya. Come on, Chubby. Take my word for it, he's really big, right? Sweet Pea, Sweet Pea, come on. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone.